Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Under Rail Expedition with me, Break It Down. So let's go open up a gate. It was weird, the game like froze right there. Let's make sure that my thing is recording. Alright. So I was trying to figure out the the mutagen sequence to make the Exodus 1 off camera, and I had zero luck. Because it turns out I'm missing four. I had to look it up because it wasn't making sense. And it turns out there are four more, I believe four, four more. Let me count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Yeah, it's supposed to be 16 and I have 12. And that's a problem. So uh, I had to look it up and the other four are behind the gate. So we're going to go open up the gate and then proceed. So first things first, let's equip a grenade. And I hope that's how that works. I should have tried interacting first, right? Oh no, it worked. Perfect. Even better. Alright, in we go. Also, ignore the cat in the background. He's upset because he's on a diet. Alright, so I see the hatch there, which is where I assume we need to go. But if there are regents back here, I gotta find those, of course. I'm not gonna mess with that computer console yet, because I don't know what it does. Hatches are usually safe, so let's check out the hatch. Ooh, throw net. Can't believe I never learned that one either. I swear that I found that one before. Ooh blood up on the, uh, on the window. Suddenly something tightens deep inside your chest and stomach and you're frozen in place. An overwhelming fear pours over you and you feel your jaw tightening, your heart racing, and your knees getting weak. It takes all your mental power not to just collapse right there on the floor. The sensation lasts for minutes, but you refuse to give in. Eventually it starts subsiding. It's as if you can feel the fear traveling through your nerves and out of your skin, dissipating in the air around. Ooh. High density foam padding, 168. Mutagen region storage, look at that, there are four left here. Son of a gun. Alright, well that'll uh, help me with the puzzle, I guess. Glass. It's too bloody and dirty to see through clearly, but it appears this room overlooks a big cavern. Mutagen combinator sequence. So modify sequence, clear sequence, create compound from sequence, inject compound. Okay. So I need to go back and scan these four uh, new mutagens, which are all the ones. Hmm, I guess that makes sense. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to edit here, and then off camera I'm going to figure out this puzzle, and then I will return, and I'll try to explain how I figured it out. Uh, but really, it seems pretty simple. You just have to put the sequences in order and have negatives cancelled out by any positives, which cancel each other out completely. And then all positives will just stack on top of each other and not create a new positive. So honestly, it doesn't seem that complicated. I just need these uh, four missing regions. It was, uh, I was racking my brain for quite a bit yesterday trying to figure that out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to edit right here. All right, so I think I figured it out. It took me a little longer than I had anticipated uh, because I got really stuck on using the wrong, the wrong regent first. Because my Exodus region starts with the ZC. And so I found the only region in my list of regions that starts with the ZC, which was IO3. And that was wrong. Because no matter how I worked around it, I could not get IO3 to work into the sequence. Um, so what I did next is I went and found the uh, region that had the last... Uh, my last two in the sequence, so EV and FD. And the only region that had that was IO2. So I knew that the last one was going to be IO2 because it actually lined up perfectly. So what I had to do was then find one that would uh, sit in the place of the first one with ZC and then uh, also like U7, HR, Y7. And actually got lucky, uh, so Ovid 2 actually has my first three in my Exodus sequence in order, but L9 is in the front. So all I needed to do was find an L9, but I was so stuck on using IO3 first because ZC was the first uh, sequence in that regent. 
our first identifier. I, don't know, I feel like I'm using sequence for two different meanings here, and it's confusing. But yeah, it's it's really not that hard. I use I worked with the negatives, and then uh, using the negatives actually made it easier to solve because a lot of my negatives. Never mind. I just proved myself wrong. I thought negative HP only appeared in one of my sequences or in one of my regions, but it appears in two. So I got lucky. It looks like. And then at one point I was on a roll. And I thought I had it figured out, and then I was uh, just double-checking everything, and I had two of my uh, Exodus sequences mixed, like, crisscrossed. So, my Exodus sequence goes ZC, U7, HR, Y7, QD, HH, JP, KN, NA, W6, OV, W9, EV, FD. And then the sequence I had laid out matched almost perfectly except for QD and HH were mixed up in my sequence and uh so that hmm, that's a real bummer this took me a while to figure out as well but I think I've got it let's go ahead and put everything in here and see what we can do um, I think that's oh, oh. Yeah, all 16. Perfect. So, if I did this correctly, I need to make sure I'm recording because I don't want to go back through this again. All right. Wrote this down. I don't know how long this took me because this was actually, I, I did part of it the night prior and now I'm doing it the next morning. I had to take a break. Uh, but let's see. Let's see here. Uh, modify sequence. So Ovid 2 should be my first one. That's my understanding. It is going to be different for everybody across the board. Uh, let's see. The second one should be IO1. And then Ovid3. Echo2. Solus2. Uh, Helicon1. Solus2. Yeah, there's another thing. I ended up using Solus2 twice. Which I didn't think I could do. That's another reason why it took so long for me to figure out. And that should be it. Let me double check that that is it. CCU7, HR, Y7, QD, HH, JP, KN, NA, W6, OV, W9, EV, FD. Yep, that looks like it. Yeah, so I had figured it out except for I couldn't figure out the second to last one again because I didn't know I could use uh, Solus 2 twice. For some reason, I had it in my head you can only use each one once. That is wrong. Though I do think that having to use some of them twice does complicate it and can make it harder to solve. But yeah, it took me took me a little while. But I, basically, what it is, even though I used Solus two once, I forgot. Like I forced myself to forget that I used it. So I made every regent viable again. And um, yeah, not 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 the easiest puzzle in the world. But it was. Uh, I enjoyed figuring it out. So, create compound from sequence, compound formed. Uh, injected. Manufacturing agent from sequence, injecting agent. Success. Warning. Toxicity detected in biomass, system unstable. Alright, so we should be good. I don't know exactly what I did. Hold on. Actually, I don't want to go down here yet. No! No! Spoilers! There's a computer console up top! So I guess that's Chert. Who's that guy? It is Shadow we expected. We have been starving ourselves for days and hope we he would come for his prize. Such a heavenly feast it would be. A storm of senses at the break of abstinence. The flesh of the High Ones, so opulent. Their thoughts, clear and brisk waters from ancient glacial currents. Ah. Uh, yeah, what the heck are... But I see now that he will not dare face us. And instead we got you. Another mangy rail rat. Trash digging, foul smelling, ugly, dysgenic, something. And in regards to the poison you poured down our well, mutt. 
It'll be of no use. Yeah, but slowed us down. For this insolence, you'll be you will suffer greatly in our embrace. Okay? Like an insect will tear you limb from limb. I'll let it reassemble you and repeat the process. You will know what agony a god can inflict. Well, hey, I appreciate the uh, the thing, but I gotta reload real quick. Um, there's a computer upstairs with my name on it, so we'll uh, we'll deal with that real quick. It was like over here in the corner. Using Combinator log terminal, Regent list logs. Access that. Connecting. Connection failed. We've read most of that before. Notes. Exodus 1 and 2, Dr. David Gerhoff. Our team recently came across two regions which have proven extremely toxic to all organisms which underwent artificial mutations. Preliminary results suggest that injecting any of these two regions, which I have designated, designated as Exodus 1 and Exodus 2, into the crucible, or use them on mutated organisms in any other way, will cause immediate and most likely fatal effects on exposed organisms. I have deleted the atomic sequences of both of these two regions, deleted their entries from the current region cycle, and stored them in a safe place. One container of each of these two regions will be used to map and possibly predict future region sequences which could have negative effects. Dr. David Gerhoff, Mutagen Tanks B, log 473-pound HJ. Hmm. Interesting. So he's who we have to thank for our, uh... Mutagen puzzle. Also, I don't think that I want... Actually, this is probably fun. I don't think I'm going to be able to stun Chert. I'm assuming that was Chert that we saw. I guess that wasn't directly explained. Now we get to listen to this guy, t or watch this guy talk again. Okay, so I had to edit uh, because I forgot to prepare because I didn't know that the fight was right here. Um, let's go ahead and equip everything that I need. So what do I have? Adrenaline shot, gonna need that. Focus stem, we'll probably need that. Super soldier drug will come in super handy. Don't know if I'll need... I mean, this might come in handy. I don't need a jackhammer while I'm fighting this guy. So let's just grab some more buffs. Super health hypo, sure. And... I wonder if he does biological damage or not. I think I'll just go ahead and eat uh, some rat hound barbecue for some bonus strength. All right, let's quick save. We'll watch that uh, introduction monologue one more time, and then we'll actually uh, get down to business. I've actually watched it like three times because I keep forgetting to equip my buffs before I come down here. So I've, this is like my fourth time seeing this. But I haven't fought Chert yet. I haven't given it a I haven't given it a shot. But we're about to kill a god. Or what they perceive as a god. Or perceive to be a god. But they haven't met Brondon before, so... It's understandable if they get the two mixed up. See, what is he talk? Is he talking about six? With the whole glacial memories or whatever? Maybe he's eaten some of Six's kind before? I still don't know who this guy is. Is he just like some sort of brainwashed lackey or is he iodine? Like, I just. I don't know. And also, how did iodine get in here if the, uh,. The gate mechanism was broken until I fixed it. I'm assuming that room that was in the Chertist outpost, Cytosine outpost, that was how he got here. Alright, so it saves and let's do it. Alright, so there's a tentacle. Which health do you have, buddy? A thousand? Can I just ignore you?
kind of want to run straight to church and deal with the eyeball, right? Yeah, I don't want to waste time. Let's just uh, run him down, I guess. Mouth of Church. Can I ignore you two? Yeah, I'm just gonna run down the eyeball. I don't know why I would do anything different. So all these guys have a thousand. Well, the one had a thousand health. I assume that they all have a thousand, right? Yeah. And he has two thousand, so I don't have, really have time to waste. Of course, he's immune to stun. I am fatigued now, which is a bit of a problem. I think I'll be okay. Then again, maybe not. I should have probably waited to use the adrenaline shot for a little bit. You know what, that's okay. Maybe I can use this on him without hitting myself. Maybe not. Ah, let's see. Ooh, not cryokinesis. Not a fan of that. The good news is I could do this. Set so 155 with just the uh, shield bash. So that's pretty good. I mean, this isn't too bad so far. I may have messed up by throwing this grenade right here. And what's he down to? Almost a thousand health, so about 50%. And I'm still in pretty good shape. Four damage right there. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and pop that. Why not? I mean, he's almost dead, I guess. He's dead this turn, right? Almost. I thought I would crit. Hopefully I don't die this turn. It's pretty close. Hey! Look at that. First try. Like, why would I go after tentacles? I know how bosses work. Like, I'm tanky as heck, man. Not worried about any tentacles. Alright, let's heal up, because... I don't know what uh, challenges await me after this. Probably none. But we'll see. It's a good thing I'm tanky as heck. Alright, so, uh, Chert. Whether it was a monster or a god, it's dead now. I wanted to throw my spear at him, but that was a waste of a turn. I didn't really get an opportunity because I ran up to like right here and I used up all my AP. But I wanted to do the whole King Leonidas thing with my spear. Oh well. Uh, the cube. Got it. And a console. Most of the commands on this console are written in a language unknown to you. There's two you managed to make out, however. Disable ladder electric field. Enable secondary... Oh, sorry. Electric field disabled. Enable secondary elevator power. 
Secondary elevator power enabled. Randomly invoke commands. Nothing happens. Hey, mutagen tank. What are these? Uh, I wonder. Oh, you probably destroyed these during the fight, can't you? It probably weakens him during the fight. Okay. It's like if I do this. Take a little while. I don't want to waste my uh, my resources that I probably won't need ever again. I just want to see what it does real quick. Yeah, probably not a whole lot right now. Buddy, I just killed your progenitor. You do not want to mess with me. Like I said. Oh yeah, there's that room down here. What does this do? Is it like a safe spot? So if I'm like a ranged build, I have somewhere to hide? Okay. Alright, well hey, I think we're done. So let's uh get out of here. <laughs> also considering the debuff I've had this whole time was the eye of chert. Not the tentacle of chert. Why would I waste my time attacking the tentacles? Honestly that was uh disappointingly easy. <laughs> oh yeah, that gas is still here. Don't walk into it, you're gonna get hostile. Nah, eh, maybe not. Hey, the uh, guy that I didn't kill earlier. You find yourself staring at a large group of armed faceless. At the front, you see a hulking juggernaut. Unlike most of his brethren, he has no exposed flesh. Cascading shoulder plates, thick breast piece engraved with a strange symbol, joint pads and even a skirt-like garment made from thick cloth all serve in case to protect the being inside. However, the trihorn helmet with a singular cyclopean lens staring at you is this faceless is Faceless's most prominent feature. Whether there is one, two, or more eyes behind that lens is not something that's immediately clear, but the powerful weapon grafted into the right arm suggests that that monoscopic vision would make it fairly easy, make its use fairly difficult. There we go. Eventually, a synthesized voice addresses you. Give us the device. Who are you? I command these forces. Now give us the device. I'll give this... I will give you this if you tell me what it is and why you need it so much. The device is a power source. You have no understanding of it, and in your hands it is useless. Return it to us, and all will be well for you. Uh, us, us and Underrail. What is it used for? I explained enough. You may not receive a further answer. Alright, yeah, it's all yours, man. Hand him the cube. The Faceless carefully takes the cube from your hands. One of the soldiers hands him a metal box in which he places the cube, closing it soon after. We have no more business with you. You are now free to leave. I had questions I wanted to ask you. No. You had the chance to ask everything you wanted. I just wanted to ask you how to get out of here. There's an elevator southwest of Hollow Earth. It's the only one functional that we know of. Alright. Well, nod and remain silent. The faceless nods, during which the soldiers behind him move almost simultaneously and pass through the gate behind you, one by one. The towering faceless is the last one to do so. Man, I wish I wouldn't have made them mad by agreeing to spy on them. Alright, uh, what is my quest now? Do I just go back and talk to Tanner? Or do I find six? All right, let's get back to the elevator, I guess. Uh, which is all the way down there. All right, let's get out of here. So it looks like we might beat the game this episode. Huzzah! And you come up with some, uh, some final words for the game.
I honestly wasn't planning on beating it this episode, so it comes as a bit of a surprise, honestly. Oh, I don't want to fight you guys. So I run past you. Not interested, guys. I believe I'm done fighting. No more blood need be shed. I guess first things first, we head towards the elevator, and then we, uh... I can only think that we would go talk to Tanner after this. Hopefully this wildlife isn't back. I don't want to fight my way through it again. Son of a gun. Alright. Shields up, and... Let's try to sprint through here. Holy crap, there's a lot of them. <laughs> They're all intimidated. Of course, now I'm dazed. bunch of jerks. Leave me alone. I have zero interest in fighting you guys. Just let me out of here. I just killed an evolutionary god. I'm not interested in fighting a bunch of bugs. Of course, it's not enough action points. Screw it. I'll use one of these and I'll throw a grenade at these guys. Haha! -ha. Oh no, not by location. What will I ever do besides leave next turn? What a conundrum. Alright. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. Hopefully this one doesn't break as well. Is he following me? Get out of here, you alien. Or interdimensional being. A familiar shape materializes before you. You are startled, but as your previous encounter had shown, his presence, no matter how unexpected or intimidating, does not mean danger. Once more, a displaced voice addresses you. The shirt is no more. The cube has been returned to the faceless. I was wondering when he'd show up again. Other events await my, or should I say our participation. That is why I am here. I'm looking for someone. Someone who pretends to be... to be one of your own kin, but is not. Hadrian Tanner. As he calls himself. Just as your lips separate to sound the most obvious question, you hear the answer proceeded. 
Tanner must die, and a few but myself can make sure that occurs. I am a powerful being, and so is he. We are the same kin, yet he conceals it better. The reasons should be obvious. What did he do to deserve death? He committed a crime. But what crime? That does not concern you. Why tell me all this? The same reason I told you about Chert and the artifact. Our events are connected. Yours, Tanner's, mine. I do not know why, but I do know that such is the case. As I saw you being an essential participant in the destruction of Chert, perhaps you are also an actor of similar importance in Tanner's, or even in other events. It is an option I would be foolish to disregard. After our conversation comes to an end, I will travel to North Underrail after him. I'd recommend you do so too. All the destruction that emerged from events we have witnessed is the consequence of his actions, in one way or the other. And his actions are unlikely to deviate from the norm. From the norm. There we go. If you want to prevent similar events from occurring, then North Underrail should be your next destination. You will be able to find me in that place called Hexagon. Ask for six. I feel like I need to continue adventuring. I love it when games, the protagonist at the end, it's like, continued his adventures or whatever. Uh, Dragon Age Origins does a good job of it at the end. Uh, it's like, you're, you know, the protagonist, the, uh, the hero of Ferelden continued to adventure until the end of his days. So I think I am going to pursue Tanner. I do want to hear his side of the story. So yeah, he is a dangerous individual. And if you're right, he better be stopped. I would go to North Underrail. Good. The face's blockade is no more, so the railroad should be unobstructed. He stops speaking, his lens is surveying your expression. Ask why you can. What are you, and where are you from? I come from far away, and as the best answer I can give you, is the only one you will be able to understand. As for what I am, the things you see will be sorry, the things you see will be enough for an answer. Turn referred to you as a high one. What does that mean? It is an archaic term, a distant thought. It does not describe me, but it speaks volumes about this particular manifestation. Far away. Where? What? You would not understand it. You do not need this information. Uh, you say Tanner is pretending to be one of us. You don't seem to care about concealing your appearance. No. Why? It would be meaningless for me to do so. Deception is not what I want. Okay. And what can you tell me about Tanner? His power is not far from my own, even though, because of his deceptive nature, he's reluctant to reveal it. He hid from me over the course of many events, under different pseudonyms. Every time I revealed him, he vanished. I won't he fight you. Has he ever tried? No. He is powerful, but not as much as I am. Are you sure he hasn't found a way to increase his power somehow? He tried, but I do not allow him. As you are able to see. And what is Tanner's real name? I will not reveal that. He told me yours. Did he? Yes. Names hold power. I revealed mine because it was necessary. Revealing Tanner's is not. Maybe in some different event. So I'm asking him all these questions, but he's not giving me anything. That's that's frustrating. You say your mission was to kill Tanner, yet you let him get away so that you could ensure Chert was destroyed. Why? I already told you. It's something I knew was most important. But you didn't know why. Why put so much effort into it when you aren't sure? I was sure it needs to be destroyed. I was not sure why. There is a difference. I cannot explain these things to you even if I wanted to. Your language is incomplete. Well, I have nothing else to ask you. Good. And our conversation is done, Rondon. Alright. I guess I won't be returning to Tanner. So Tanner is not a good guy? I mean, their whole system seems pretty ambiguous. Alright, back to Southgate Station. Where am I at? 
near Southgate Station. Let's go ahead and wrap up this game. No need to prolong the end. As sad as I am to see it go. Not worried about resources anymore either, so. So I'll throw a grenade at my feet. Man. This is the longest Let's Play on my channel by a fair margin. I feel I feel attached to it. Now I am gonna replay through the base campaign again. Now I don't know if that's gonna be on camera or not, but I did miss one entire um, series of quests. And I think if I would have done that, I would have leveled up. I would have hit level thirty. So I'm just shy. Of hitting level 30. Right, so I'm not sure where we're supposed to meet at. Was it here? Well, let's do one more thing. Let's go drop off all the uniques that I found in deep caverns in my uh, in my private locker, where it all started. Well, I guess it started in the armory, but... I don't need the jackknife anymore. Haven't needed the jackknife for a while, but uh, maybe it's in the administration and library? It's over here, I think. Let's go ahead and quick save, just in case something goes awry. Verahale. I guess he's the only counselor left, because, uh... What's his face? Gorski went to... Uh, Core City. For the moment you stepped into the room, Vera's eyes were fixed on you. However, you're aware that the worried look is not only due to your lengthy absence. Brondon, I'm so glad you are alive. As we heard Protectorate forces are moving toward the Institute of Chert, and not hearing from you for so long, we became really worried. No, we have yet to determine if I'm actually alive, considering the things I've been through. I understand, and you deserve rest. I wouldn't want to delay it any longer, but something happened. Tanner disappeared. I know. She pauses. So, the word is already out. Tell me about Tanner's disappearance. He left his office some time ago, and no one has seen him since. No one saw him leave through any of the station's exits. Any of the station's e yeah, exits. Like he vanished. This has never happened before. So many things are happening around South Underrail, and his disappearance worries me. Vera looks at you, as if wanting to say something. But that statement seems like it has been replaced by a different one. We still haven't checked his room. Since you are here, I think it is best you do it. Yeah, why me? Usually, I would approach Gorski with these kinds of things, but since he is still in Core City, that leaves you as the one I would trust the most with something this important. In that case, I guess I'll have to do it. See Ezra. He will let you into Tanner's room. Keep your eyes open and try to find anything at all which might shed some light on what is going on here. Alright, on my way. Good. Meanwhile, I think it's time I assemble the council. Return to me once you and Ezra inspect Tanner's room. When there's not... Okay. Erza looks at you with his one good eye, and speaks in his usual calm and even fashion. Have you spoken to Vera? Uh, that is why I'm here. I'm ready to go to Tanner's room. Erza presents the key card to Tanner's room. Follow me. Follow Ezra. Alright.
There. I'll wait here while you inspect Tanner's room. Won't you help me? I won't want to get in your way, Brondon. Okay, I'm going to take a look inside. And be cautious, just in case. Do you know something I don't? If I did, I would have told you by now. <laughs> right, I'm going inside. I wonder if you have a perception. Oh, I can click on that. You stare at the odd picture in front of you. A seemingly solid surface is occasionally shifting before your very eyes, and soon you begin to wonder if it is solid at all. Touch the picture. As your hand comes closer to touching the picture, as those words of caution pass through your mind, you, ign you ignore them. A warm sensation pulses through your fingers as they meet the surface and vanish in it. They feel as if you're pushing them through a, a viscous fluid, and they also feel distant. You push your arm through the picture. Slowly, your arm disappears up to the elbow. The warm sensation now travels all the way to your shoulder and slowly proceeds further, creating a feeling familiar to blood flowing into a numb limb, but more intense. However, after holding this pose for a few more moments, the warmth begins to dissipate, and the arm feels gone. Your mind begins to panic, screaming for the severed limb, and pain becomes excruciating. Go through the picture, yeah. Despite the burning urge to pull your arm out, you said push your whole body through. For a brief moment it felt like you swam through thick, warm liquid, yet you were clean upon passing through. The pain is gone, and you get to the other side, whole. You think you can stop me from hacking your stuff? Don't be ridiculous, Tanner. A plasma core, fantastic. A mask fragment. You see fragments of what appears to be a realistic human face mask. Oh. Judging by its position, this could be some sort of a console, but you have no idea how it functions since it has no obvious displays or controls. It's the same thing as that it was uh, over at the Institute of Chert. As you step out of the picture, you're startled to see Ezra staring at you. I see you have found something interesting. I thought you were going to wait for me outside. I thought so too, but something drew me in. Wait, did you know about this picture? No, so calling it a picture seems rather inadequate, based on what I've just seen. Tell me, Broad Dawn, what was on the other side of this portal? A small room with a stasis cell of some kind, and two desks. There was a chemical set, and a number of different chemicals there, along with what appeared to be mask fragments. Ezra absorbs your words, but the only response you get are a few slow nods. You know something, Ezra. The things you describe are familiar to me. Over the years, there were a few instances where I was able to peer into Tanner's mind. Faint shapes of what you described was what I saw. I was quickly expunged, however, in every single one of these instances, so I know nothing of the purpose or meaning of those things. Tanner's disappearance is a mystery to me as it is to you, Brondon, and now I believe it is a time to share your findings with the rest of the Council. Let's go see them. I like Ezra as a character. He's got enough mystery to him. <laughs> the three of us. But yeah, I, I really like Ezra's story and uh, his place in Underreal. As you were describing what you saw in Tanner's room, you could clearly make out expressions of growing astonishment on council members' faces. You finish, and with that, the room instantly becomes noiseless, as if empty, until old Jonas speaks. And there it is. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Aren't you listening, woman? This is the moment. The moment where we can finally sit down and discuss the man, if he's even a man at all, who's been a mystery to us for all these years, yet we never dared to speak about him. It, whatever. I know we were all thinking the same thing of him, or thinking the same of him. Yes, she pauses. Tanner was a mystery, as you said. His appearance, his background, or lack thereof, and just his presence. He stood out as something I felt as soon as I got here. But no one ever spoke about Tanner, ever, and he was a competent man, so I accepted things as they were. Well, Vera, it wasn't only you. I remember Tanner when he came to the station. I had hair and more teeth, and the epithet, old, was far off from becoming stuck to my name. Tanner, he looked barely different than what he looks now. 
Maybe it's because of that thing you saw in his room, Rondon. Tanner barely aged. You people might not have noticed it as much, but I did. I felt the same as Vera, as every single soul in the station, and for a good reason. Tanner was clearly hiding something from us, and a peek into his room, as revealing as it is, poses more questions than answers. He shrugs. I don't know, but at least we can now openly discuss Tanner. I do not disagree with anything said here. Our opinions do not differ. However, we now need to focus on the reason, or reasons, for his disappearance and how that will affect Southgate Station. And Brandon, I feel, has more things to reveal to us about him. Brandon, you performed quite a few tasks for Tanner recently. Ever since he got here, Tanner's been sending him around. Do you know anything else you feel we should know? Now's the time to talk, Brandon. Tell us what you know. The tasks Tanner gave me were all somehow connected to the mysterious object which was stolen from the Faceless, causing them to invade Core City and the rest of South Underrail. I've learned that the object is a powerful one, and Tanner wanted it for himself. All this has led me all the way to Deep Caverns, where I've seen it finally get returned to the Faceless. Are, are you trying to say Tanner was the one responsible for the invasion? The story gets better and better, but what the heck is this object you're talking about? The object is a power source. I do not know what the Faceless are using it for, but it's definitely something important if they're willing to invade us for it. It is a polyhedron made from some unknown material. It had strange markings on what appeared to be sockets of some kind, which is probably how it is connected to whatever it's powering. Incredible. Tanner must have needed that device so badly he was willing to risk an all-out war with the Faceless. There is, however, the question of how he was able to steal it from the Faceless in the first place. Someone must have done it for him, but how the whole theft was accomplished, that I do not know. In any case, you mentioned you went all the way down to deep caverns. Tell us how it happened. The object somehow ended up in Cortex Research Facility, from which it was stolen by Chertists. After infiltrating their institute, the Faceless attacked, but the object had already been sent down to deep, into deep caverns, so I had no option but to follow it. Better and better. Would you stop that, Jonas? Hmm. Seems like everyone wanted this object, including the Enigmatic Institute. Why did Chert send it to Deep Caverns? What do they have there? They have Chert. What? What is Chert? It is one ugly creature, one giant, disgusting, mutated mass of flesh with slimy tentacles sprouting from it. Everyone is silent, exchanging stares. I killed it and returned the object to the Faceless. You got a real pair of mighty boulders between your legs. How do you even walk, son? Fascinating. You've seen amazing things in such a period of time, and you live to tell the tale. This tale presents more questions than answers. We still don't know we still don't know who Tanner truly is, what he was going to do with the faceless device, and where he is now. Uh, there is a thing or two I've learned that might shed some light on who ta on who Tanner really is. Do tell us, Brondon. I met this humanoid creature which calls itself Ram Umbra. We've met even before Deep Caverns. It seems that we were both involved in all these important events regarding the faceless object. Can you describe it? He's lean, tall, about as tall as Tanner, and has a prosthetic arm and a leg. He wears a metallic looking mask, instead of eyes he has four lenses. One other striking feature is that he has six digits on each of his hands. As tall as Tanner, mask. He is a powerful individual even capable of things like instant teleportation. The technology he wields is far more advanced than anything we've ever seen. Yeah, go on. He and Tanner seem to be of the same species, from what I understood. Ram Umber wants to assassinate him, and he seems to have been trying to find him for a long time. Now that he has finally discovered him, Tanner slipped away and fled to North Underrail. So, what you're trying to say is, Tanner, is, Tanner has been posing as a human in order to hide from whatever the hell it is assassin and now bolted as soon as this Rom Ember sniffed him out? Everything makes sense now. The faceless object, Tanner's appearance, that stasis cell in his room, his departure. We still don't know what he was going to do with that gizmo. If I can bet the five hair on my head, it's related to him wanting to... him not wanting to get zapped by his fellow kinsmen. Gentlemen, I think a long meeting is ahead of us. Thank you for everything, Brondon. The rest of us have a long discussion ahead. You, on the other hand, might want to go get some rest. Might want to get some rest, some good rest. You've done more than enough. Afterward, you should come to my office. 
I will. Get in my room. Yeah, it is. I'm okay with like a bunch of open-ended mysteries at the end of a game. Uh, I do enjoy leaving the leaving it up to the player to decide what happened. While there's still some, while there are still signs of concern intertwined into her expression, you notice more confidence and resolution in her stance and speech. Did you rest well, Brondon? Uh, yes, I did. She nods. Do you know why I wanted to speak to you? Uh, you needed me for something. Yes. To be more specific, I wanted to offer something to you. How would you like to become one of the Southgate Station counselors? Why me? The Southland Rail hasn't been this tur turbulent ever since the breakup of Biocor. Earthquake, faceless invasion, United Stations integration, and increasing conflicts between Underrail Protectorate and the Free Drones, to mention but a few. After you left, the Council discussed you and your recent, first-hand experiences throughout South Underrail. We feel what you know would be of great use to our station. That is why we offer you this position, and it is something upon which we all agreed. You don't have to answer right away. Think about this. You most likely take over some of Tanner's duties, some of the ones you can manage. At first, then, well, we'll get into the details and specifics after you give me a positive answer. Do you want to become a counselor, Brondon? What benefits does a counselor get? You'll be able to directly influence the future of Southgate Station. Right now, we all live in a similar live in similar living conditions, so do not expect a significant improvement in that regard. However, you will receive a better pay, respect both in and outside of Southgate Station, and more. I'll have to think about it. Certainly. There's no pressure on you. We simply feel you'd be a valuable contribution to the council. I'll be here once you've made your decision. I understand. I have some other questions to ask you. Are there plans for SGS to join United Stations at some point? Our citizens and our counselors are divided on that matter. Okay, we've already talked about that. I thought it was different. Alright, I'm gonna go to the Metro. I'm not staying here. I want to go to North Underroo. If I can. If not, then I'll just become the, uh... Oh, here we go. Traveling by Metro costs you 25 Sharons. Where would you like to go? I think my destiny lies in North Underrail. For one, I sided with the Protectorate, and their base of operations is in North Underrail, so I already have contacts there. And uh, that's where Six wants me to go. Because again, I think that's where my destiny lies, so let's go to North Underrail and end the game. I don't think there's anything left for me to do. After the Scrappers were defeated by combined forces of Black Eels and Protectorate, the political landscape of the very south of Underrail changed. Is that to click or...? Okay. The Protectorate managed to take the next step in their plan to integrate the southernmost bastion of humanity into their fold. Alright, I'm going at its pace. As they eventually would, by pitting the ambitious people within the Black Eels against the current leader promising them money and status within their organization. With piracy being decisively suppressed, the waterways become much safer for trading, which helped the town's economy and helped ensure its survival in the foreseeable future. Okay, so it seems like Junkyard's doing extremely well for itself. With the Black Eels being in charge. With both Burrowers and the Rathound King out of the way, Haythorians extended their hunting grounds and grew their community. They took care of their faceless problem. Rail Crossing's troubles had only just begun. Since they lost too many people during the faceless attack, they had to seek help from the Protectorate. The train carrying the armaments, ammo, and general supplies eventually arrived safely due to your help. Yeah? How's that a... How's that a bad thing? This allowed them to survive multiple attacks mounted by the Ironhead clans of the surrounding tunnels. They smelled weakness, but they were also weak in themselves.
The absence of Baylor and his clan was quickly felt, and the Ironheads found that they were unable to penetrate Rail Crossing's defenses. The raids thus ceased after a few more demoralizing defeats. I thought Baylor was more of a uh, foundry problem than a Rail Crossing problem. Peace and quiet, at least by South Underrail standards, finally returned to this weary station. After being so close to eradication, Rail Crossing was faced with an important decision. To keep their independence and rely on themselves, and the help of other stations for security, or to integrate into the United Stations and benefit from its protection. The decision has yet to be made. I thought I'd set up so the Protectorate would take over. With the beast dead, the Foundry was able to resume its production. Though economically prosperous and safe from outside threats, the city continued to suffer the same health hazards. Life in Core City went on as before. Caged by the city's high concrete walls and mesmerized by violent entertainment, workers, merchants, bandits, zoners all struggled onward, while oligarchs played their shadowy games. At least for a while, because for one oligarch, however, the game got personal. Oh, the uh, Praetorian because his son was killed. Not long after Edmund was killed, an unfortunate accident befell Simmons' son, Meland, as well. Knowing this is the work of Archibald's lackeys, the head of Cortex sent a suicide drone in an attempt to end Knight's life. The attempt was unsuccessful, and despite Edstrom's attempts to broker peace between them, the two organizations entered an open war, plunging Core City into chaos once again. One organization thrived in this chaos, the Silver Hand, formed by the Zone Rats gang and led by Gorski, who left SGS to pursue his ambition of taking control of Core City. So did he return order? With Sneaky and Dan at his side, and joined the general support of zoners and other poor inhabitants of the city, Gorski managed to quickly establish the Silver Hand as a recognized contender in Core City, rivaling even the oligarchs themselves. Good job, Gorski. Despite all the pandemonium, though, the arena survived, and people still came in droves to watch gladiators rip each other apart. Legend of Impaler, <laughs> a mysterious gladiator who came from nowhere and quickly rose to the title of Invictus, would live for years to come. Though they suffered a setback through the destruction of Epion Lab, the Protectorate still made a major advancement into the south, of into the south when it took control of Junkyard. With the free drones out of the way, their operatives had much easier time uh, infiltrating and operating inside still independent communities of the region. The grisly fate of free drones haunted your nightmares until the day you died. Well, that's, that's good to know. I have a conscience, guys. Once the Protectorate soldiers managed to crack the heavy gate and enter the Institute, they found none alive among the carnage. All the bodies of the dead faceless were gone, and all the Chertis lay where they fell. Yeah, that just reinforces the fact that I think the faceless recycle the dead bodies into new faceless. Except for one. Iodine's body was never found. Ooh. Finally, killing Harmo Stavros left the remaining Rassifors in disarray. After Chert was destroyed, they were swarmed by the rampaging Chertlings and slaughtered to the last. Yeah, suck it. That's what you get for messing with Detritus, you jerks. 
a fate well deserved. The Black Sea expedition struggled as soon as its ship sailed into all but forgotten water waters. Ugh. However, Aegis Incorporated defenses did not give in. Slowly but surely, the Lemurian facilities were opened one by one, providing advanced technology, knowledge, and clues toward what would be revealed to the, be the expedition's ultimate goal, the Acorn. So they, is that talking about my journey? But they never saw the Acorn. Realizing that it was time to leave, they gathered what they could and managed to sail out of the Black Sea safely and for good. Alright. So they gave the Acorn to the Protectorate. In the beginning, since the expedition's arrival, the Grim Jetters mostly kept to their own part of the sea, waiting for the right time to strike. And then I killed them to the last man. Put them to the spear. They did manage to launch a series of successful raids following the expedition's retreat, but then they suffered a swift and unexpected eradication, and with it, a great threat to South Underrail. To South Underrail waterways was removed. The destruction of the Shadowlith fragment evoked evoked bloodthirsty madness in the Stormer Baron, and in their mutual butchery, they spared no one. Well, I thought I killed everybody. The lights turned dim, the villages fell quiet, but for an occasional painful cry, and the northern coast of the Black Sea became redder than they'd ever been. Whoopsies. Both medical supplies and electricity improved the quality of life greatly in the Muti Refuge, and not only in a practical sense. The former gave them enough relief to view their ex existence under the calming lights provided by the latter, and this helped them reevaluate it. And soon, a faint sense of hope began to spread across the refuge. The Under Rail Protectorate took great interest in the Acorn, and it was sent to their headquarters in Dis on a fir on the first available war train. I said far train, which isn't a word, so its whereabouts after that remains unknown. Meanwhile, Todd found a new life on the ferryman's old ferry. His new fatherly figure raised him as his own until drawing his final breath years later. After cremating his body and thus sending its ashen remains high into the air above, Todd left the Black Sea. Having lost so much time carrying his burdens was not a concern for him, since he knew there was still plenty there was still plenty of time left for him to have a family. There you go, Todd. Under Vera's leadership, SGS fostered a good relationship with the Protectorate and United Stations. Not long after, SGS became a, an official part of United Stations. Not everyone was happy with the direction SGS took. Most of Gorski's followers, and even some neutrals, left the station to join his silver hand in Core City. At least they had options, you know? They were allowed to leave. Gorski himself denounced Vera publicly and declared himself her enemy. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, that's a little worse, but it makes sense. He hates Protectorates, so. As for yourself, you decided there were more important things than managing a station, but that your destiny lies elsewhere. You boarded a train that took you far to the north to Hexagon, where you hoped you'd find Ram Umbra. And that is a story for another time. Or next time on Dragon Ball Z. Having retrieved their previous their precious artifact, 
The faces retreated back into the depths from which they came. Under rail. Is that it? Did I finally beat the game? Almost 200 episodes in? Whew, man. What a journey. First off, I do want to thank everyone who stuck with me through the entire series, especially those who uh, have been leaving comments to help me on the ride, on the journey. Uh, I appreciate that. Because I had a little bit of experience with the game, but not enough to uh, say that I've played it before. Especially now that it's taken me 200 episodes to complete. Um, I cannot recommend this game enough to anybody. If you like tactical RPGs, if you like good dialogue or stories, um, this this is the game for you. Like, hands down, I, I will recommend this to anybody. I think it's only like $15 too. And it's got plenty of replayability. I can't stress that. I, well, I can't stress that enough. It's just a fantastic experience. Like, I missed a lot of stuff. Like, I'm, I'm going to go back and play through the... Uh, the free drone storyline, I'm going to side with, uh, I'm going to do Abram's quest, which I know leads to a whole other series of quests. I don't know what they entail, but I'm excited to play through it. Um, there's different builds I want to try. I'm probably going to still make stick to melee, so I'll do like a stealth knife build or something like that in my next playthrough, because I like melee. I'm not a fan of, uh, ranged weaponry. But yeah, I mean, every aspect of this game is fantastic. The soundtrack, just one of the best soundtracks, consistently great. Um, I'm going to put it in my top five soundtracks of all time. Number one being Chrono Trigger. You just can't beat Chrono Trigger. It's such a good such a good soundtrack, but Under Rail is up there. I don't know where it lays in that top five, but it's, it's up there. Probably like right next to Halo. Um, like every, every situation, like there's so many unique soundtracks for different areas and for different factions. It was just fantastic um, and I really like I liked how they mixed it up a little bit uh, there was like different puzzles throughout so you had the the musical cipher and then you had the mutagen puzzle which are I think the two biggest standoutish puzzles in the game um, some people warned me about the battery factory in the beginning but that one was super easy compared to the other two because I actually had to you know step away from the computer to solve the other two but I enjoyed it you know it made me actually take out a piece of paper, write it down, and think about it. And I, I appreciate that. I know that's not for everybody, um, but you also don't have to do either one of them, to my understanding. Uh, the Mugen puzzle just makes Chert easier to fight, and the uh, Musical Cypher just unlocks, it gets you like unique weapon and an oddity. An oddity. So, they're not required. It's, it's optional content. Uh, but I, I enjoy those. Uh, the challenge. I love challenging myself. I like challenging games. And this game definitely provided that. And I think with the melee build, it provided a whole new level of challenge. Uh, I feel like I had to be more adaptable when it came to you know, certain situations. And I, I learned new mechanics in the game. You know, the zone transition cheese and things like that. Because uh, again, melee was challenging. Like the Fetid Marsh. <laughs> The horrible, horrible hell that is the Fetid Marsh was probably the greatest challenge for my build because once you got to a certain point, the sea worms, you just couldn't hit them. Like, there was no way for me to have gotten th uh, through the Fetid Marsh if I hadn't found the Ethereal Torch, which is a whole really side, like that whole Ethereal Torch thing was really cool. That whole little side quest was just the coolest thing. I think my only regret was not using a sledgehammer. Which I didn't really regret. I wanted to use a sledgehammer initially because I like, you know, big two-handed hammers. But I wanted to showcase the spear because it was new for the DLC and it, it worked out. Like, I was super tanky. I was basically a god among men when it came to melee combat. And, uh, yeah, it was great. And it had a little bit of versatility because I had, like, the spear throw, which also... Which I put points into throwing for, which also helped with my grenade throwing. So it, it worked out. Um... But really, I I love this game. Like, I'm, I'm going to recommend it to anybody who asks, uh, who I talk to, if they have any sort of interest in sort of like tactical RPGs. Now, there were some some really low moments, like the gauntlet. I had a 95% chance to hit some enemies in the gauntlet, and I think I missed six in a row. 
in like the first third of the game, I kept missing those 95% chances to hit. Someone even mentioned in the comments that 95% chance to hit is more like a 40% for me. It was, uh, I was extremely unlucky. But, yeah, this game was just an absolute blast. I cannot, I can't stress that enough. If you are on the fence about it, get this game. It is, it's worth it. Like, it's, uh, it's worth the money. Also, I never noticed this shadow right here. What is that? It's pretty cool. But yeah, highly recommend this game to anybody. If you're at all on the fence, get this game. You don't have to wait for a sale, because it's really, it, it is worth the, the base price. Which I thought was $15. I might be wrong about that. It might be like $20. But I know it's not like a full-priced game. And I'm super excited to see where the next expansion goes. Because uh, the next expansion is going to be a standalone expansion. It's not going to tie into this main story. Um, I mean, there are a few things I'm on the fence about, but like as far as like the story goes, some of the the plot holes, but uh, that's not a big deal. But I think it takes a really good game to engage you, even when you're not playing. Not even when you're not playing it. Like, there were, I was theory crafting, not theory crafting, I guess it's more builds. I was theorizing about certain story aspects. Um, if you're interested, I've, I talked about them with a couple of the commenters on some of the videos as well. But, uh, like, I was thinking about this game when I wasn't playing it. And I think it takes a really good game to keep you engaged when you're not sitting in front of your computer or your console or whatever it is, and you're still thinking about it. Trying to come up with like, explanations for the story, connecting the dots. Like, you can't beat an experience like that. It's just fantastic. Like, this is... I can't believe I waited so long to play this game. But, uh... Yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm gonna call it here. And thanks for joining me on yet another adventure. And I hope to see you guys in the next Let's Play.